At what degree of scoliosis is surgery recommended? Scoliosis involves the development of an unnatural sideways spinal curvature. And in order for the unnatural spinal curvature to be diagnosed as scoliosis, there must be a rotational component involved in the scoliosis, meaning there must be a twist, making it a true three-dimensional problem. Typically, wherever the curve exists, the, the rotation will be into the concavity of the scoliosis. In addition, the curvature must be a minimum of 10 degrees or greater measured by a Cobb angle analysis for it to be diagnosed as scoliosis. Now, when we look at Cobb angles, Cobb angles are actually the angle of measurement that's taken during a scoliosis x-ray, and it's the gold standard in assessing scoliosis in terms of severity. A patient's Cobb angle is determined during the x-ray by measuring lines from the top most tilted vertebra to the most bottom most tilted vertebra, and it expresses this uh, number in degrees. The higher the Cobb angle or the bigger the angle means the more severe the scoliosis and the more out of alignment the spine is, and typically the more rotation that's associated with the scoliosis, and therefore it can help us classify this severity, either as a mild scoliosis, moderate, severe, or something I like to call very severe as well. The angle is very important when it comes to dealing with scoliosis because it helps us determine whether a patient needs to consider surgery as an option or conservative treatment option as an option and also helps us determine do we think the curve is going to progress in the adult form in the adolescent form where they're growing and how much we think it's going to progress so when you look at the size of the curvature it really helps us determine treatment protocols now does every scoliosis always require surgery no many cases of scoliosis will never become severe enough to require surgery and even those that are detected early and are treated properly they're more likely not to become severe because the more if you treat small curves you're less likely to develop severe curves however not all all small curves are treated depending on by the doctor that you choose to help you treat your scoliosis. And we look at the treatment options that exist out there, there's two main paths. And I always say there's traditional treatment options versus modern conservative treatment options. And traditional treatment options tends to do nothing with small curves until they become severe and they react as curves worsen during growth or during progressive stages of scoliosis. And as the curve worsens, then they tend to react with more aggressive treatments where the end stage is tends to be this surgical types of recommendation, where conservative options tend to intervene at smaller curves to help reduce curves so they never become surgical levels. Now, when we look at how severe a scoliosis needs to become to start considering surgery, we understand that this there is a range here. Now, normally it's somewhere around 40, 40 degrees. This is where they start classifying scoliosis as severe, 40 plus degrees. However, some countries may say 35 degrees, they start recommending surgery. Other countries could say 40 to 45 degrees. Others can say 45 to 50. Some other doctors can say 50 to 55, depending on the size of the curvature, where it's located, the age of the patient, in terms of where they become a surgical candidate. Also, we're looking at just a degree. We also have to look at the size, uh, the age of the patient, and the function associated with that patient, meaning a 40-degree curve in a growing 12-year-old girl may be recommending surgery very quickly because they're concerned about how much they're going to worsen during during progression, where a 40-degree curve in a in a 65-year-old adult or elderly adult that's not progressing quickly that has lots of other health conditions, they may not recommend surgery because the, so the impact of the surgery could be so severe that the patient may not survive the surgery. So it's not only degrees, you also have to look at the patient and make a decision in terms of what you think is best for their overall well-being. But we know scoliosis surgery starts to be becoming considered once it hits this severe threshold. Moderate scoliosis between 25 and 40 and scoliosis between 10 and 25 where it's considered mild are normally not treated. They're normally in the traditional approach or normally just left alone and kind of they're watched and they're, and they're observed. The only exception to that will be patients that are going through their rapid pubescent growth spurt where they possibly could be recommended a a Boston brace or a Providence brace to try to slow down the progression. Those braces are not designed to reduce the curves once they're already there. They're just trying to slow it down. So that's the only time they're treated. So outside of that, when you're looking at curve and severity, there is no treatment ever recommended for any other patient other than severe cases that they consider surgery where they want to use some type of surgery to help reduce the curve. And the surgery that's involved is something called spinal fusion. And spinal fusion, the number one goal is to stop progression. 
that's its initial goal, is they use rods and screws and they install them into the most tilted vertebra in the top to the most tilted vertebra below. They use bone grafts and bone uh, in between the bones to fuse the bones together and then use rods and screws to hold the spine while the bone fusion is actually taking place and, the, and it becomes one solid bone. So wherever the surgery is performed, instead of having multiple vertebrae like your spine should have, you have one solid bone and the spine is fused and it's fused for life. There are certain things that you can undo in life, but scoliosis surgery is one of, not one of them. Once it's performed, it is performed. Whether it's successful, whether it's unsuccessful, where complications develop, there is no way of undoing spinal fusion. Now they can undo the screws, they can put the screws out, they can pull the rods out, but the spine will still be used in those areas and the, what the costs are in terms of having a few spine is unknown long term meaning 20 30 40 50 years we have no idea how this spinal fusion can affect the health the strength and the function of the spine it's definitely going to expect it's going to affect spinal flexibility range of motion it's going to have some impact on quality of life and and health we just don't know exactly to what degree it depends on the person, the size of curvature was performed, the way the surgeon performed the surgery, how many bones are actually involved in the surgery. So there's a lot of variables associated. At the very least, anybody can say that scoliosis surgery, this type of spinal fusion is very invasive. So what does conservative scoliosis treatment look like? Well, it involves really treating curves so we can prevent surgery it is a non-surgical approach. And the idea for this non-surgical approach is to maintain function of the spine while trying to reduce the size of curve. And a lot of times if we're doing these types of treatments while curves are small, we can prevent curves from ever becoming severe. But even severe cases that are recommended surgery, many cases we can reduce below surgical threshold so they no longer need a surgical recommendation or treatment option. Now, very often a chiropractic center or a functional approach is really the foundation of this, of this type of treatment. Chiropractic-centered or functional approaches, like I mentioned, our goal is to reduce the curve while maintaining function. And when we talk about correcting scoliosis, we're not talking about correcting it, meaning making it to zero. We're talking about reducing the size of curve, reducing the impact, and correcting or reducing the, the degree of misalignment so the curves actually become smaller. And we do this on a structural level by using therapy to help improve core strength and flexibility. We do use this conservative therapeutic options that can include different types of tracks actions and rehabilitations. We use different types of home therapy, home rehabilitation. We also use corrective bracing, and we use these in different age groups, even beyond growth phases, because the braces that we designed are helped to reduce the curve, not just slow down progression. And the bottom line is that every program is customized for the person that's coming into the clinic, the size of curve, their age, and what the ultimate goals are to get their curve either as low as possible or out of surgical threshold. So therefore, we're not, they're not impacted by the invasiveness of surgery. So even though there's no 100% guarantee when it comes to treatment options, we do know early detection, when it's responded with early treatment, close to the time of diagnosis, there's way fewer limits on how much reduction and how much improvement that we can achieve versus allowing a curve to continue to progress and progress and progress and then react as the curve worsens more like traditional approaches. So we like more conservative approaches that are more proactive because a few spine is completely contrary to what the body was initially designed to do. It was designed to be flexible. It was designed to move. It was designed to, to move with the, the, the patient's demands and fusing the spine is not a natural approach. It's like taking your arm, saying you have an elbow problem, fusing your elbow together, making your arm perfectly straight and saying now your arm is healthier. It's definitely straighter, but it's not functioning the way it's supposed to. So therefore, in our approaches, we want to restore, we, want to, we want to keep this function. So therefore, your body has the ability to do all the things it was designed to do throughout your entire life. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this information helpful. If you'd like to hear about other topics and information on scoliosis, type in the comments below and let us know. And finally, subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified of when we publish content. Thanks.